Managing global access to widely used systems is a common challenge in Unity development. Whether it's an NPC system responsible for handling NPC logic or an audio system for playing sounds, ensuring these services are accessible throughout a project is essential. There are multiple approaches to solving this, but each introduces its own set of challenges and can lead to tightly coupled code and hard to maintain projects. In this video, we will address the challenges and implement the service locator pattern. This approach allows services to be registered, retrieved and replaced dynamically, ensuring a clean and modular code structure. Let's begin. Before we implement the solution, let's examine the problems we need to solve. One major issue is rigid dependencies. When an object is directly linked to a specific service instance, replacing or modifying the service for testing or future updates becomes difficult. This is most noticeable when singletons are directly referenced throughout the code, making them difficult to replace or extend. Another challenge is lack of flexibility. Static classes lack support for interfaces and dynamic replacement, meaning any changes force widespread modifications. The third issue is dependency overload. Manually passing every required service through constructors can lead to bloated, difficult to read code. While dependency injection helps maintain modularity, it often results in long constructor signatures and complex initialization logic. A pattern that addresses these shortcomings is the service locator, which allows for dynamic service management without introducing tight coupling. Let's start implementing the service locator pattern in Unity step by step. We will begin by creating the service locator class, which will manage the registration and retrieval of services. The service locator class is declared as static, making it globally accessible. It contains a dictionary that stores registered services with the type as the key. The register method allows services to be added dynamically. The get method retrieves a service, checking if it exists before returning it. If a requested service is not found, an error is locked and an exception is thrown. This should ensure the correct usage of the pattern and avoid silent failures. It also helps to catch missing registrations in development rather than at runtime. Finally, the unregister method removes a service when it is no longer required, ensuring flexibility in managing dependencies. Next, we define a service that can be registered with the service locator. We create an interface called iAudioSystem, which declares two methods, PlaySpawnSound and PlayDespawnSound. Using an interface allows different implementations of a service to be swapped as needed. We then implement this interface in the AudioSystem class. The methods in this example are placeholders, but can later be expanded to include actual sound playback logic. To ensure that services are available as soon as the application starts, we create a bootstrapper class. Inside the awake method, an instance of audio system is registered using the service locator. Setting the execution order to minus one ensures that this script runs before any other script that depends on registered services. This script should be the only one with the modified execution order. The bootstrapper should be the only place in a project that handles service registrations. Services should never be dynamically created by the objects that use them. A class like this can also be used for other global initialization logic. Finally, we write an example class to show how to retrieve and use the registered services. For this example, we will create a player class. In its awake method, we call serviceLocator.get to retrieve a service of the type iAudioSystem and store it, ensuring it is available before use. In start, PlaySpawnSound is invoked, demonstrating how services can be accessed globally without direct dependencies. Now let's examine how an implementation like this can improve global access. Singletons tightly couple dependencies. The service locator mitigates this by dynamically registering services making it easy to swap or mock them for testing, especially via interfaces. Replacing our audio system is as simple as unregistering the old one and registering a new instance, provided it implements the iAudio system interface. No other code changes needed. Static classes lack lifecycle management, interface support and dependency control, making them hard to replace. In contrast, a service locator lets you register and swap services without modifying dependent scripts resulting in more modular, scalable code. Manual dependency injection can bloat constructors or factories, while a service locator retrieves services only when needed, keeping code clean. 
Moreover, dependency injection forces all objects to be instantiated by script. Script-only instantiation eliminates convenient editor workflows and runtime modifications, which can hurt development velocity in teams with mixed skill sets. A service locator can coexist with other instantiation methods, even supporting self-initializing components, eliminating the need for a complex spawner. Finally, Dependency injection containers require high team discipline and can be misused, leading to drawbacks similar to singletons when dependencies are overdeclared. The service locator pattern offers global accessibility without tight coupling and supports modular, flexible and testable code structures. Whether you're developing a small indie project or a large-scale game, it's a powerful tool for managing dependencies in Unity. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss a new Unity tutorial. Got questions or other design patterns you would like us to cover? Drop a comment below. Check out our channel for more Unity best practices and game development tips. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.